Hey, good Thursday morning, everybody. Meteorologist Brian Penovich here. We've got an increasing severe weather threat for this afternoon. The threat went from low a couple days ago to medium yesterday. Today, we're kind of in that high range. Now, I'm going to break down all the threats and timing first, and then we'll get into the meteorology here. But I can tell you the timing is this afternoon and this evening. I know it's a pretty broad table because there could be several waves. And our primary concern is going to be damaging straight line winds. So let's get right to it. We'll show you the visible satellite image first because this is key. The more sunshine we see ahead of this system to the west, the bigger the threat for severe weather because this is going to kind of build up the fuel. If you look carefully over parts of um, you know eastern Tennessee, there's a little swirl right there where my cursor is. Now, that's what we call a um, mesoscale convective vortex. Essentially, it's a mini low pressure system that was formed by thunderstorms the day before. So there was a big complex of storms. So it actually created its own little low pressure system. Well, these things can maintain themselves. And as they push east, they provide a perfect focus and shear, every, all the ingredients you need for severe storms. So let's get right to the outlook today. I'll show you this several times, but you can see this is the updated one as of this recording, 9, 11 a.m. Most of our area is in the high risk for severe weather. Now this is based on the, the climatology here for the Carolinas. SPC puts these out. We kind of adjust them for our area with the wording. So low, medium, high, and extreme, four levels. We're at level three. The reason we're at a level three for this system is damaging straight line winds. The tornado threat's not zero. And in this setup, you can see tornadoes, but the damaging wind threat is a hundredfold higher risk than tornadoes today because the damaging wind threat will be over a bigger area and it's about a 45% chance of damaging winds versus a 2 to 1% chance of a tornado. So it really is a damaging wind threat. And there's also a pretty, I would say, somewhat elevated hail threat with this setup. And I'll, I'll talk more about that in a minute. Now, as far as timing, really this could start as soon as midday in the mountains. But as it pushes east is when things get active. So mid to late afternoon and into the evening. And if you look carefully, I've got the highest risk. Uh, kind of centered right here in the damaging winds between about 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. So if you're looking at that time frame with a hot, with a really peak there, maybe 4, 5, 6, 7 p.m. as far as, as timing is concerned. So let's go right back to that risk again. I'll kind of show you the wider view here. You can see the system to the west. So let me break down these risks a little more. I always like to tell you the individual risk. So this is the overall severe weather risk. You see it in high, that red area. Let's show you the probability of tornadoes real quickly. Pretty low. That green is 2% or less. So it takes up a pretty big area, but that's, you know, really, that's your general, if you're going to be in a medium to high risk, you're going to at least have a, a low risk for tornadoes. The probability of large hail, um, you can see, is right there in that yellow area. Um, if you look carefully, I try to probe this. I don't know if it'll let me probe it, but um, you're looking at basically a 5% risk in the brown, and then the mustard color is like a 10% risk. But watch what happens when I show you the probability of wind. That is really high. So we go 5, 10, 15, I mean uh, 5, um, 15, 30, and 45. So this area in pink is actually a 45% risk of damaging straight line wind. So pretty significant there. Notice it stretches from Columbia um, to Fayetteville. And the interesting thing about the way it's shaped, remember that spin I showed you here? If you were to take a comma-shaped squall line and push it across, it kind of lines up right there. And that's kind of what I expect to happen um, later today. So I've got the current radar on here right now. We've already got some storms heading towards the mountains. But let me kind of show you how this is going to unfold as we go into the afternoon. And I'll show you that on our future cast. So here's a look at our future cast. And we'll go hour by hour here starting at 9 o'clock in the morning. We'll go to 10. Um, we'll go oh, 10 o'clock. Excuse me. There's 10 o'clock. There's 11. There's 12. So this is midday. We go to 1 o'clock. Okay. 1 o'clock things start to get a little interesting. We start to see storms developing back to the west um, right around 1 o'clock. We'll go to 2 o'clock. Look at the lines forming to the west. We'll go to three o'clock and then we'll go to four o'clock. And here's where I think this is why I had the peak of the severe weather right in that evening hours. Now, not everybody this is going to see rain. This is one of those situations where the, the storms like this are still scattered. The problem is, even though they're scattered, there's a really high chance the ones you see are going to be severe. So there is a chance you could get missed on this completely. But just know if you see a storm today, the chances of it being severe are pretty high right now, especially damaging winds. And just looking at the shape of these, if you look at um, them, um, the fact that they're like bow echoes, and what I mean by bow echoes, you see this shape. 
I'm going to draw it over here. Think of a bow and arrow. It stretches out like that. It's got the string here, and then the arrow goes through like this. Those are usually a sign of strong outflow or damaging winds. So the fact that they have this shape even on our future cast tells me damaging winds, and as I showed you, are going to be a big issue today. So we'll go through time. This is 5 o'clock. Notice we've got um, a couple clusters here. And again, don't look at the specific location. Don't go, oh, phew, it's going to miss Charlotte. This is based on what's happening right now. Every hour I'll rerun this. This is like boiling water sometimes when these storms bubble up. You know they're going to bubble up, but you don't know where the bubble's going to form on the bottom of the pan when you boil water, right, or the pot. This is, a, this is the case with this. We don't know the exact location. So once they start forming and we can start tracking them, we'll have a better idea on specific locations. But look at this more for timing of the storms as opposed to the specific location. You can look at it as a general location, but I wouldn't look at it as specific. So for instance, here at five o'clock, I wouldn't say Charlotte's going to be out in the clear. I would say somewhere in here at five o'clock, we're likely going to see storms. That's kind of the way I would, I would look at this. Six o'clock, you see the storms pushing east. And notice that area I showed you earlier where the highest, um, the highest wind threat was. I think that is actually where we'll have the most instability, sunshine, all the ingredients there for severe storms. This is going towards seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. So again, they're going to be scattered. Don't expect a big giant swath to go across the area expect clusters to be dancing across the area and the ones that are going are going to be quite strong and again let me back this up and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put back on the high wind probability and you could see kind of right there that kind of lines up pretty well with where the, the bigger clusters of storms are going to move this afternoon now one thing i know everybody gets worried about tornadoes and just to show you the tornado threat is low, it's not zero, but I'm going to show you those, what we call, you know, basically rotational tracks. So this is a look at the same model, looking at where it thinks there's going to be rotating thunderstorms, and I'll go through the afternoon. And there's one little area down here where there might be some rotation and maybe up here, but overall, that's pretty puny rotational tracks. That's not a really strong signature uh, for tornadoes. If we get a tornado, it's going to be because... Um, we get a quick spin up and embedded, excuse, <coughs> embedded in one of these lines um, as it pushes through the area. So, you know, what's more likely is when we get squiggles in the line. And when I say squiggles, is sometimes these lines can have little kinks in them, and sometimes where the kinks form, you can get a spin up. So, uh, the tornado threat overall is not zero, but as I mentioned earlier, the bigger issue here is going to be damaging straight line winds of 58 miles per hour or higher. And again, that probability is around 45 percent so if, uh, if, if we see you know a 60 percent chance of storms today or 50 percent chance which is about what i think the coverage is going to be 45 percent of those could have damaging winds so that's that's a good chunk of those so, so if you see a storm today just plan on the potential for it being severe now one of the things to watch and I'm, i'll keep an eye on for um, basically the next several hours how much sunshine are we going to see so let me throw the surface on here real quickly and I've got the radar and satellite together. So we've got mid 80s, some clouds here. But one of the things I look at is what we call that thunderstorm fuel or cape. Right now I'm looking at where it's building and notice the areas it's building first along the coast where there's more heat and humidity. Back to the west, the clouds and showers are stabilizing things. Now, hour by hour, this will change. If we start seeing it spike up over the Charlotte area, uh, then we know we could see more of a problem this afternoon. Um, with a bigger threat for storm. So this is how the environment can actually change over time. And that's why today you need to stay weather aware because things will be very fluid as this develops. The specific location and timing of storms is something you really can't nail down until storms start to form. So right now the window is this afternoon, as I showed you earlier, and I'll go back to this, basically noon to 9 p.m., but the highlighted area would be like 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, for severe storms today. So I'll post updates throughout the afternoon online and on air, and you can have complete updates, obviously, at WCNC.com. I'll see you today starting at 4, and hopefully not sooner, because that means we have warnings on the air.